This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister and read by Tirana Singh In today's episode we continue with the transfer of training In book 3 In chapter 3 this is section 5 The truth is true and only the truth is true The truth is true and only the truth is true. This profoundly simple statement applied directly to every seeming problem of this world has the power to bring the mind out of confusion and fear. It has the power to bring the mind back into the simplicity and safety of the present moment in an instant. What is the truth? When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life, the Holy Spirit was speaking. The truth is an experience that God is. It is a state of mind far beyond form. Words can be reflective of it and can point towards it. But the truth can only be known as an actual experience. In this world, the ego made up its own version of the truth. It involves six billion separate minds, each with its own version of truth. This distorted idea of the truth is nothing more than a judgment based on the past, subject to change and therefore unreliable and unreal. Nothing about this world is true, for you are not of this world. This is a world of shifting, changing images, and the Christ, being like God in every way, is eternal and changeless. The mind seemed to lock itself into time and space, exchanging reality as God created it for a pseudo-reality based on images. Forgiveness is the escape from illusions and the return to the truth. Seeing the false as false also requires humility and a great willingness to be wrong, to come to an admission that I have been mistaken in my thinking. I do not know what the truth is and I am willing to be shown. As the mind continues deeper and deeper inward toward the truth, one realizes that nothing the world believes is true, and it, the world, offers nothing of real value. All beliefs around survival, nutrition, exercise, love, relationships, life and death, sickness and health, causation of any kind and the purpose of every separate thing of this world are to be raised and questioned, seen as false and handed over to the Holy Spirit so that another way can be chosen. Workbook Lessons 9, 14 and 15 are helpful in supporting this initial step of seeing the false as false. Lesson 9. I see nothing as it is now. And from the second paragraph of Lesson 9. It is difficult for the untrained mind to believe that what it seems to picture is not there. Lesson 14. God did not create a meaningless world. This idea is another step in learning to let go the thoughts that you have written on the world and see the word of God in their place. The early steps in this exchange are what can truly be called salvation. And lesson 15, my thoughts are images I have made. It is because the thoughts you think, you think, appear as images that you do not recognize them as nothing. Not only are the images seen as real, but the the deceived mind then orders the thoughts 
or images into hierarchies. As an example, let's apply lesson 14 to the thought of a plane crash. God did not create that airplane crash and so it is not real. When the event seems to be past and related to other people and to have occurred elsewhere, it seems to be more acceptable. There is a seeming gap of time and space, a split between the perceiver and the event or object perceived. But when applied to persons, events and places in one's immediate environment, one's immediate life experience, the ordering of thought seems to cause great resistance to accepting and applying the teachings. Greater importance or reality is given to chosen special ones and special things. If only the truth is true and nothing else is true, then every thought held in mind right now, relative to every person, object and event in time and space, such as my best friend, my mother, my spouse, my pet, my house and my wedding day, all are equally unreal. This transfer of training without exceptions is fundamental to the healing of the mind. To hold one exception out from the rest is to refuse the acceptance of the correction. The acceptance that all illusions are equally unreal. When Jesus said, Be as little children, he was speaking of an open state of mind, a willing and humble attitude that happily releases any belief that it knows what the world is for and how it should be. In Lesson 184, Jesus says, You live by symbols. You have made up names for everything you see. Each becomes a separate entity identified by its own name. By this you carve it out of unity. This carving up, this establishment of perception is wish fulfillment. What is named is given meaning, seen as meaningful and seen as causative. This establishment is set against the given truth. The name of God is the replacement for all the separate names, purposes and meanings of the world. The Holy Spirit uses all of the symbols of the world, including words, to point towards the truth. Remembering creation has one name, one meaning, and a single source which unifies all things within itself. Remember this world is a substitute for heaven. It is not your home. All memories, thoughts, relationships place, events and people can be used by me, the Holy Spirit, for glorious purpose of awakening. Tread lightly amongst the images. With gratitude, allow them to be released from your mind. Only through true forgiveness can the mind be freed from illusions and be free to accept the name of God as the replacement for all of the little names. Free to accept reality as it was created by God the Father.